There is a feeling that is familiar to us all, something we all experience at one time or another, a feeling that stirs up sensations of intense passion and its effects get stronger over time, a feeling that can compromise our judgment and make us do things that we would never normally dream of doing, a feeling so powerful that it can compel us to perform heroic acts and its causes can even be worth dying for. For some people, it is their fate to be hated. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but names, names leave scars that might never heal. Most of what Sarah eats comes back up the same way. She's never wanted a model's body, but lives in constant fear. She used to fear the cruel things people would call her in the playground. Now, her biggest fears are the cruel things she calls herself every day. The sound of laughter still makes her skin crawl, and despite a loving husband, she will never be pretty, no matter what the mirror shows her. She'll never be anything but that mixed-up kid. Sarah suffered the unkind judgment of those who, in another world, might have been her friends. But memory can be selective. Sarah forgets the things she and her friends would say about the more popular girls, that they were fake, plastic, stupid. Even now, in the back of her mind, she judges them. They'd never have a career. They'd never know true love. Their lives were shallow. But the fact remains that hate will never drive out hate. For Anita, life is something that happens to other people. She's a spectator. The unforeseen consequence of her grandparents' decision to raise a family in a land that promised more than their own. Although she was born here, she feels like a foreigner, an immigrant, an intruder. You can't tell her she's not because that's how she feels, not just because of how she looks, but because of the ideas and beliefs passed down from her parents. Beliefs that teach her love and tolerance, that encourage her to help others in times of need and remind her that we are all equal. Beliefs that help guide her through difficult times and gave her comfort when her grandmother passed away. Ideas and beliefs that in one form or another exist in every town, in every land and touch the life of every single person on the planet. But kids can be cruel. The brave face that Anita wears is only a mask to hide her feeling of total separation. She knows what they think. She catches the looks and hears the whispers. There aren't many, but each one tightens the mask a little more. Perhaps one day, she'll come to realize that she embodies the best of both worlds. Until then, Anita will hide, caught between East and West, Unable to be the person she truly is, one day it will be different. After all, someone has to be, right? Right? Luke never had to look very far for a victim. His world was littered with easy targets. Those who failed to meet his idea of perfection. People who were less fortunate than himself. Some would say he had a wicked sense of humor. Others that he was just plain wicked. Luke was lucky enough to have been born with a healthy brain and fully functional limbs. Golden attributes handed down from his parents who were just as perfect as him. Until that one fateful day. The day he heard the news about his mother. That the accident had claimed all but the blink of an eye in the blink of an eye. Luke sobbed as his mind scrambled to process the doctor's words. Words like paralysis just didn't belong in his world. 
terms like 24-hour care were never meant to feature in Luke's life. How can this happen to me? The people he once called friends whispered and sniggered behind his back. And though he was hurt, Luke knew that their laughter was nothing more than a distant echo of himself. The darkness swirled around in a toxic cloud of sadness, grief, frustration, and fear. His perfect family, his perfect life, gone. But then came the day a neighbor offered some kind words, and the day a local support group volunteered their time to his mother's care. That was when it dawned on him. For some people, disability is something they have to deal with from birth. For others, it strikes later. And for the very fortunate, it never happens at all. But we are all vulnerable. Luke still feels guilty when he remembers the person he was, but his pride as a carer is replacing his regret for the past. Fate intervened in Luke's life. Who knows what kind of person he would have become if it had not. This is Ben. Jamie's known him since primary school. When they learned to play the guitar, Ben was much better than Jamie. When they played football, he was midfield and Jamie was third reserve. When they took exams, he was always at the top of the class, and Jamie had to take home a disappointing letter. When they were seven, Ben's father suffered a fatal heart attack. At the funeral, Ben told Jamie he wanted to become a paramedic, and he did. Jamie sometimes wonders how many lives Ben has saved, how many new lives he's helped bring into the world, how many people he's been there for at their time of greatest need. To Jamie, Ben is one of the greatest human beings he's ever known, and anybody who knows Ben would agree. Thoughtful, intelligent, balanced, just a few words you might use to describe Ben, but for all the adjectives in the world that might find themselves attached to him, only one ever seems to stay stuck. It took Ben several years to come to terms with who he is. Some people just can't get past what he is. Labels may well describe what you are, but they will never define who you are. I don't belong here, Thomas whispers as his world slowly fades. The warm sensation of trickling blood, a welcome distraction from the cold concrete on which he lies. The blurred images of his assailants, the last his eyes will ever see. The echoed shouts of abuse, the last he will ever hear. And as his young heart beats its final beat, his final thought is of the most precious thing he has. Thomas was born into a community of people who for centuries have lived on the edge of society, a race of people whose traveling lifestyle was shaped by the pull of available work and the push of persecution. Thomas was 10 years old when he asked the question, Dad, why are we gypsies? Because we were born that way, son. Be proud of your roots. But Thomas grew to realize that heritage can be a heavy load to carry. His father was a successful businessman, his mother a nurse, but still they felt judged by their culture ahead of their careers. His home was made of bricks and mortar, and yet they mocked him for living in a rundown caravan. His grandfather died on distant lands protecting his country, but to the outside world, they felt like outlaws. And as much as they wriggled and twisted to claim their due respect, it was a never-ending battle. The prejudice was too deep-rooted. They would not listen. They could not understand. Difference, nothing more than that, 
prompting such hatred and anger. The battle was lost for Thomas. It would end here on this concrete. A life filled with love and kindness cut short because of ignorance. Think about that for a moment. There is a world out there, many miles from this one. This world is called Xerox. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this place is like Earth, but when you look closer, you see that it has one big difference. On Xerox, there is no difference. There is only one type of flower and one type of tree, both green as there is only one color. Trips abroad aren't necessary as everywhere looks like home. The fashion is simple since trends don't arise. The music is exquisite, but there is only one song. There is no female, nor male, no black, no white, no Muslim, no Christian, no fast, no slow, no big, no small. There are no politics, no wars, no debt, nor famine. None of the problems brought about by the fear of difference. Since everyone and everything is truly equal, as they gaze upon Earth through a powerful lens, they see a vibrant world much different to theirs. A world of cultures, belief, music, art, sport, science, a world of dazzling variety. But in the shadows, they notice a spectre, a twisted facet of the human character, a poisonous characteristic that seeks to resist diversity and deny anything that could be considered different. Discrimination, persecution, hatred, and in its wake, a trail of misery, destruction, and despair. So much to celebrate, yet hopelessly blinded by judgment. Foolish creatures, decide the Xerox, no hope, they declare. But as they turn away from this violent, complex race, a final glimpse reveals a thing of profound beauty that stops them in their tracks. An earthly being that bears no judgment of others, cares nothing of color, race, shape, ability, or sexuality, something that requires and dispenses only love and has the potential to make the world a better place. For the many lessons we teach a child, there are many lessons that they can teach us. Our vibrant, colorful, brilliant world, free from hate. Imagine how great that could be. We can all make it happen. It's up to us. It's up to you.